It's the it's same. The same. <laughs> Dude, it, lucky dog. It was a 50-50 chance <laughs> yep. there, buddy. I was worried about that. Isaac, what's up, man? What do you have for us today? All right, man. You see the pretzel in the head? Oh, I see the pretzel in your yeah, head. It's all good. <laughs> um, what it, what we're gonna do today is make the rear motor mounts or transmission mounts in this case. Uh, maybe an extra crossbar for maybe some flooring. Removing the rear swing arm on this thing so we can see what we have to do to make a drive shaft to go to that rear end that we got to look into uh, putting on this frame. And uh, I'm thinking a four link system on this. Uh, we'll see. Sounds good, man. A lot of custom work. Yeah. Let's get it going. The cross brace is just a hair under 28 inches wide on the inside of the mount. All right. Motor mounts look good, man. Cross member looks good, but it's a problem for our feet. We have plenty of space now for our feet between our ankles, but I know as soon as we get bumping up and down, we're gonna nail our shins on that cross member. Yeah, my knees catch it on the cross cart. Yeah, and we don't want to deal with that again. Nope. Definitely not. The whole purpose of this was just to make the interior space bigger. So. We're gonna to need to figure something else out for the front. Probably bend a piece of tube from up here, take it down here, or even from up here. That is looking so cool, dude. I don't know about you, but it looks like we have a mini trophy truck rear end. We do, <laughs> we do. Chevette axle plus uh, ATV tires. Equals we like to party. Exactly, looks mean. So you are getting close to uh, being able to weld in that rear motor mount support for the transmission, et cetera, so. et cetera. Yep. And uh, I'll go ahead and start mocking up the rear end. Whew, sounds good to me, bud. Yeah. You've got the hard part. I have to say that looks nice. That engine's not going anywhere. Uh, it's a, it's a, not quite as nice as I was hoping for. I mean, this is our first time doing a build, like trying to bend as much as we can. Well, you know, we're running into all kinds of problems because the engine is so massive. We're having to cut corners in other areas for foot room and all that stuff. Yeah. And yeah, to make that pipe so narrow, for foot room, I, I almost missed the uh, transmission mounts. It's all right. So it's not as pretty. No, it's all right, man. So, mm -hmm. next thing to do is to take that rear end housing off of the transmission and see what kind of drive shaft we have. Taking the swing arm off. That's right. So we can see how to adapt it are you, to are the you Chevette. Sure? Are you sure you don't want to put the motorcycle wheel here right now? and then do the front suspension to have a test and reverse strike. strike. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to expect. There might be differential oil in here. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny how we got like half a chassis built. We hung the engine and everything and we're just now figuring out. I know. Like, I, was... I mean, we're just, we're trying to hurt ourselves here. Yeah, we might be uh, doing an engine swap before this thing ever gets going. I hope not. Let's see what we got here. Okay, remember I think what we have is gonna, uh, gonna be a flange shaft here going into this housing here. That's just a guess. Well, I had it backwards. There's the flange shaft and there's the other piece. Oh man, let me see. 
So the drive shaft turns this way to go forward. <gasps> it it's the it's same. The same. <laughs> Dude, it, lucky dog. It was a 50-50 chance yep. <laughs> there, buddy. I was worried about that. Can you imagine putting it in first gear for the first time and go to take and off go and backwards. it goes backwards? <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody needs a uh, K100 rear diff, give us a call. This threads into this housing, and when you get it screwed in and some snug, snug <laughs> stuttering, you put the lock nut on there and lock it into place. Oh, gotcha. So interesting. Yeah. Oh, look at it. It's a drive shaft. It's cute. Yeah. It is cute on this end. So it'll be a little bit of, uh, so there's a little bit of plunge, Ooh, plunge and then get yes. a, another flange like this put on this side with a universal joint and that's it. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we need to find a spline shaft with the same spline, right? Yeah, we can worry about that when it happens. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, so now that the drive shaft is there and I'm happy with what I see, I think what we need to do is line up the rear rear end make some cross braces and see about starting bolting in this rear end in this frame sounds good to me so we need a cross member for around the drive shaft area and then we also are going to need to cut out this back section here yep. so this pumpkin has room to go up and down pumpkin remember the show pumpkin chunkin oh, i love that show i know r.i.p I didn't think about the drive shaft getting in the way over here. If we had a independent rear suspension, we wouldn't have any problems, but we're gonna have to cut out a section in this bottom frame to allow the rear diff, drive shaft, and all that stuff to move up and down freely because we're going for a lot of um, travel. travel on this, this rear end. So, uh, I'm going to cut out that spot and we might add a little hump later. Uh, I added these extra braces just to give a little bit extra to keep the bottom of the frame to flex out and stuff, but I feel like later we'll, we'll add a little something extra. So let's get to uh, sawing, dude. Yeah, sounds good. We have that rear end mocked up as well. Uh, we have the tires just under nine inches up in the air, so that's just to simulate maximum uh, compression on um, this, so we're going for about nine inches. It just what happens to be what we stacked on the <laughs> So nine inches of compression, and then and then there's probably going to be another nine inches of uh, decompression. Travel. Yeah. So plenty of travel. Yep. Deeds done. Now we can weld in. These pieces here. My oh man Isaac over here is starting to get emotional. It's starting to look like something. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So we're kind of at a standstill right now until we get our himes in. Yeah, hem joints. I'm gonna have to figure out something with the, uh, I need a short little dry shaft. And then we can move on to the front end. That's right. Which is gonna be the worst part of it. 
<laughs> it's going to be tricky. I mean, steering is going to be a Steering is beast. very tricky, especially if you're going for a lot of articulation and, and tr travel. We're going to... I don't, I don't care what you do. You're going to get some sort of bump steer. Yeah. And I do not want it to have bump steer like the monster truck. Oh, I agree. I'm with you. Which the monster truck does pretty good, but she's got some bump steer. Definitely. Thanks for watching this episode, guys. We got the rear motor and transmission mount done. Um, we exposed our drive shaft. We need to figure out what to do with that. We got our rear end kind of placed. We got it bolted in in two places here. I think next time, whenever we get our Heim joints in, we need to figure out pan hard bar and then our forward links as well. And then our struts and everything like that. So I'm very happy with the amount of travel we have right now. I mean, if we had an unlimited budget, we'd just go out and spend five grand on some, uh, on some really, really nice springs and shocks, but this is cars and cameras. So we're going to be using some, uh, some shocks and, uh, some coilovers from a Mazda Miata. So it's just a matter of figuring out how we can set those up so that they're the right softness. And then also they will give us plenty of travel as well. So, uh, but anyway, until then, check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews for sneak peeks on what we're up to. And of course, uh, pick up a t-shirt or hat to help support our future projects and help us rehab this old shop at uh, cars-cameras.com. Hope you all are staying safe out there and you're not getting too stir crazy in there. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and Ike, lead us out, buddy. Check me out. Isaac, it'll be fine, guys. Take it easy.